So yesterday, the Chinese launched their first all-done trip to Mars. Been there, done that for NASA, right? But one thing that has been done first in the United States as well is private space. And what, roughly six weeks ago, the SpaceX Dragon capsule, renamed the Endeavor, delivered two astronauts to the International Space Station. I had the opportunity to speak to those astronauts, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin, as well as the ISS Expedition 63 Commander Chris Cassidy a little bit earlier today. Well, glad to have you on board. And, and uh, right now, we're, it's a very special time for us because we've enjoyed about uh, six weeks together, I think, and we're focusing the next week or so on getting Dragon and Bob and Doug ready to depart and head back to Earth and conclude their fantastic uh, uh, test flight of the Dragon capsule. It's exciting for those of us who are old enough to remember the old Apollo missions to see private space, uh, I'll call it exploration. But I'm curious, Colonel Bankin, what was it like? You've been on shuttle missions before. What was it like to be aboard the, uh, the SpaceX Dragon capsule or the Endeavor as it's been named, right? Yes, uh, we had the opportunity, Doug and I, to, to name the capsule Endeavor, which uh, we really appreciated. The SpaceX team giving us that opportunity to kind of uh, put a stamp on that vehicle to make it a little bit unique. Uh, for both of us, it was uh, really remarkable to kind of come so many generations forward in terms of spacecraft development. The shuttle, as you uh, probably know, was designed and really built uh, on 70s and maybe even 60s era technology, whereas the Dragon capsule, both uh, the parts that you can't see because they're behind panels um, and the parts that we do interface, which the, the touch screens and the handful of buttons that we have are just uh, decades uh, advanced from what we had seen before on our previous flights. And so it was just remarkable to get a chance to, to fly on a vehicle that was so much more modern and so much uh, cleaner, if you will, focused on the design of, of getting a vehicle to the International Space Station and back. The shuttle had a lot of capability, uh, pickup truck sort of a capability for hauling things into space. But a lot of those features we didn't use on every mission. And uh, the, the Dragon is really sleek and purpose built for what it did to get us to the International Space Station. Really remarkable. Colonel Hurley, you flew the last shuttle mission and you flew this first uh, private capsule mission. What's different uh, about previous experiences you've had in space, especially as you get ready to pilot this thing back to Earth uh, in roughly about 10 days? Well, you know, completely different era in a lot of ways. It's hard to believe it's been uh, nine plus years now since that flight, uh, SGS-135, to where we are now. You know, that mission itself, uh, there was a lot of uh, final or last events that we had on the lead up to the launch. And then, of course, when we returned home, that was it for the space shuttle, uh, an incredible 30-year career. And now this being the beginning of a, the new era where we have private partnerships uh, providing vehicles uh, for NASA to fly to and from the space station. And also uh, contributing as we go forward out into the solar system to the moon and Mars. So uh, it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat way to see how things have developed in that nine year span. And I know it sounds like in some ways nine years was a long time, but to get where SpaceX has gotten with uh, a crew on board space station uh, nine years later is, is pretty impressive. And just to be uh, a small part of it, you know, it's a huge team at NASA and at SpaceX that, that made all this happen. And then the other big difference, I think, for both Bob and I being veterans of shuttle flights is just the opportunity to uh, experience a long duration flight uh, up here with Chris and, and be a contributing member of the uh, ISS and you know, whether it's maintenance, science, uh, these guys did four incredibly successful spacewalks uh, and then now kind of packing up to uh, head back home and uh, conclude our test flight. It's been just an incredibly different experience and but rewarding just the same. Commander Cassidy, for those of us who uh, were little boys and cheered those Apollo missions and are still have the little boy excitement, how long until we're back on the moon do you think? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that's a great question. NASA is trying really, really hard to do it in the next uh, uh, couple years. There, we got our work cut out for us, and, and the country's going through some difficult times, as the whole world is. So, so it'll be some, some I'm sure, some priorities that have to be decided upon in our nation's leadership in terms of funding. But uh, the technology for us is, is there. We're, we're, we have the, that in our grasp that we can. We can harness the smart minds of, of the, uh, the commercial partners as well as the, the NASA team and uh, get, on, get on to the surface of the moon as, as soon as we can. I don't think that the three of us, uh, our, our uh, size 11s, are going to be walking on there, but uh, somebody that we work with right now will be walking on the moon for sure. Uh, Colonel Bankin, I know you just completed a, a spacewalk. I ask this with all sincerity, knowing that you all have fighter pilot training. How do you do that without losing your cookies? You know, uh, first they didn't give us very many cookies when we uh, uh, had breakfast that day. Uh, but uh, but seriously, I think for both uh, Chris and I, you know, it's really about uh, having a good training background to fall back on. Uh, all of our spacewalkers go through an extensive uh, set of experiences uh, back in Houston in the, the large, it's called the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory. It's basically a, a 40 foot deep uh, swimming pool with a space station sitting at the bottom of it that you can go and work inside of. And I, I think really that experience gives us something, the, the muscle memory, just the tasks that really match up uh, just like uh, it is when you're outside on a spacewalk. We also have some virtual reality uh, gear back at the Johnson Space Center where we can put a headset on and climb around on the exterior of the space station. And I'll tell you what, that uh, virtual reality headgear is more likely probably to make any of us nauseous uh, than uh, the actual spacewalk experience. And so uh, going through those events is, uh, is really good training and they do an awesome job of uh, preparing us to, to just be comfortable while we're out there. I, I will tell you that uh, both Chris and I remarked on the, some of the work sites that we had were pretty far out. I know other astronauts have been out to the edges of the space station before, uh, but it, it really is uh, something that you're aware of, that you are, you are on the very edge of the space station. Uh, some of the signs out there say dead end, <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it's true that uh, you don't want to keep going in that direction unless you really know what you're doing. But uh, uh, just a lot of training, and that uh, really set us up for success. And final question for you, Colonel Hurley. I cheered watching you fly to the International Space Station. I will cheer when you are home safely. It's the first time, though, that a, a private spacecraft will have completed this uh, launch and then returned to Earth. Are you nervous in any way? No, we're not nervous. Uh, we've been working uh, at least in part with uh, SpaceX and with the commercial crew program for the last five years. Uh, been through the uh, trials and tribulations, as it were, with, uh, with the, both NASA and with SpaceX uh, to get to this point. You know, there's been a lot of work. There's a very uh, incredible team, both at NASA and at SpaceX, that have been working on this vehicle. And uh, both Bob and I have tremendous confidence in uh, both th them and this vehicle to get us back safely uh, somewhere either in the Gulf of Mexico or off the coast of Florida uh, in about a week.